I've been teaching Premiere Pro since 2013, and every time Adobe makes a new release, I feel like I am trying to show up to the YouTube release party for the updated tutorials, except I'm late and I'm bringing the same dish as all the other guests. And I'm here late, but I need to make this video anyways because I want you to know about all these awesome new updates that Premiere has released, including a new import menu, a new export menu, a free integration with Frame.io, which is an awesome collaboration tool for working with others and getting feedback on your edits. And that's all coming up right now. You can click the links below to jump to the specific video that you're interested in. And if you are in my Adobe Premiere Pro course, I am actually creating longer, more in-depth tutorials on all of these features that you can get. And they should be live in the course now. Awesome, I'm glad to be here even if I was late to the party, but I'm happy to see you. Thank you for being here. Let's get to it. The first update is if you click the new project button from the home menu, or if you are on an open project, you'll see this new import tab at the top, which opens up a whole new window or just workspace for importing video and starting a project. At the top left is where you choose a project name, and then you have your project location. You have your recent folders, or you can choose any from this choose location option. On the left hand side, you have all of the folders, common folders such as desktop, downloads, pictures, etc., and also your devices. So, any of your external hard drives, your SD cards, and you can search this and start to import footage already while you create a project. So, this is different than before where you might just start a project, it would open Premiere Pro, and then you would have to import afterwards. Now, Premiere is giving you the option to actually import all of your media assets into your project as soon as you're starting it. So for example, here in the middle of the panel, I'm in my Premiere Pro course downloads folder, which has a number of f asset folders for audio, graphics, photos, videos, etc. You can rearrange the size of the thumbnails and the look with these list view and thumbnail view icons up there. You can filter by name or actually sort by name, date creation, etc. You can filter by only specific file types and you can even search for specific files. If you want to select an entire folder to import, you can just do that by clicking the checkbox. If you want to select multiple files or folders, you can click and drag over those. And you see a preview of these folders down here. You can also go into a specific folder and select individual files. What's awesome is now we have a preview of our video files. So if you scrub through it, Similar to how you see it in the thumbnail view, once it's imported, you can actually preview your files here. You can select the ones that you want. And then once you're happy with all of your selections, you can do some different settings over here that's interesting. So you have copy media. So this is going to create copy all of the media that you're selecting here to one folder, which you can select and ch choose here. Now, why would you do that? Well, one is if you just want a clean project and you want all of your files in one place, that might be great. Or if you are actually looking through your files from an SD card. So I, I haven't imported these files yet from an SD card, but maybe I'm looking through these and I want to actually just import them onto my computer or onto an external hard drive while I am going through this menu rather than importing them to my computer and going through them later. Maybe I don't even want these files on the computer right now. So it sort of speeds up that ingest process as well. If you are very organized and know how you shoot, or maybe you're shooting multiple projects on an SD card, this is going to make that process easier for you. Next, you have the new bin drop down. So this is going to add everything into a new folder into your project panel. And then also another cool thing is you can create a sequence from these files. 
This also is awesome if you are have your files either from an SD card or just on your hard drive, you can actually start to actually lay out a sequence. So maybe I know, okay, I want this video and then that video and then this video and it actually does it in the order and you can preview it here. So you're actually expediting the process of editing a video. This is great for vloggers or people that are just creating a ton of content because it's going to expedite that process so much more. You give the sequence a name and then you click create. It's going to import everything. Now the one thing I don't like about the process so far is that it imports it all into one big folder or just into your main project panel. And then you would have to go in and organize it. That's not as good as having it all organized in audio, video, graphics folders and then just using the finder and dragging and dropping those folders into this panel which will keep it organized. So that's one flaw that I see. You might want to just use the import menu one media type at a time and create a new bin. So say you just do videos, call this video, import. Then you go back to the import tab and you go and do your audio, graphics, etc. But now you can see now I added all those files, which were a bunch of random files. But at the end, I have this little sequence of videos that I shot from a day at the park with my family already laid out in a sequence. That is awesome. So that's the new import feature, which is super cool, super awesome. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I want to talk about with that. Let's go straight to the export menu. So you'll notice that the layout is different. You don't have your workspaces up here in the middle. You have them over here in this drop down menu, or you can choose to show workspace tabs up here. You can actually increase or decrease the size of this here, and then you could edit which workspaces you want to show up here in this edit menu. So if you only use a couple of them, then you could clean this up, for example, and you can just simply remove some of these and then it's much more cleaner. You can just quickly go, jump from one ex workspace to another. But I'm talking about this new export module. So you still have your quick export, but if you click export here, you have this brand new panel or tab really, completely redesigned. So let me just quickly walk through it. Over on the left, you have your main t types of exports. So basically, a media file or if you're exporting or publishing it somewhere. So media file, that's if you're saving it to your computer, standard stuff. Previously, all of these publishing options were sort of hidden in a tab in the pop-up menu for export. Now it's right here, which I think is going to encourage a lot of people to do things like turn on the publish to YouTube option. And once you sign in, you verify, you can actually published directly to YouTube. You have your channel, your playlist, your title, description, all of the things that you need to publish on YouTube. Not all of the settings, so like things like ads and end, car, end screens and cards and all that, you would have to go to YouTube to do it. But at least now you can just hit the export button once and it's going to not only export the file, but also upload it to YouTube with the privacy settings set to private automatically so that you can go and edit it on YouTube yourself. Or if you want, you can make it public directly from this option. But that just saves a little bit of time for a lot of us YouTubers using Premiere Pro to edit. And all of these other uh, platforms are very similar. You have to sign in and just it'll have the specific settings for that platform. Back in our media file settings, if you click that, it opens up a panel here in the middle, and this is going to look very similar. It's the same option, so I'm not really gonna go through the options, but here you have your file name, location, your presets, your file formats, and then down below, you have these drop-down tabs where you can change all of your settings, your customization settings down here. This was all in the previous panel, but it's just here now. You can change your audio, you can turn on and off any of these things that you want to export or not. You can create presets from this drop down here. 
in the preset menu, you have tons of presets. If you haven't seen this before, you just search for YouTube, for example, and you have all your, your YouTube presets. You can favorite the ones that you often use and so that you can quickly get to those favorites with this little favorite menu right here. And then click OK. Another cool thing is you can add a media file destination, which allows you to export two different formats at the same time. So maybe you want it at 4K, but you also want it at 1080p for some reason. Or maybe you want a lower file size for reviewing. I don't know why, but you can actually export two media files at one time, which is super cool. So once you have all your settings, you click export to export. You could send it to Media Encoder if you need to edit back in Premiere Pro while it's exporting. And that's the export menu. That is pretty cool. Another quick feature or quick button that I think is awesome is the maximize video output. This was like a super obscure keyboard shortcut to make the output preview full screen. It was control tilde on the Mac. That's command tilde. But now they have this quick button. So now I can just do a quick preview and then you can escape it escape button to get out of that to preview your video full screen. It's like, why wasn't that a button? So that's a pretty cool feature. The other last update is frame.io. So if I go to workspaces and let's go to review, let's make sure that's up there. Let's click review. That's going to open up this frame.io panel. You get a free frame.io account with your Adobe subscription, which is cool. I've always wanted to use frame.io a little bit more. I have friends that use it when they're collaborating on documentaries and different edits. I haven't used it as much because I'm not working with a lot of other editors myself using Premiere Pro, but it's awesome because what you can do with it is you can make notes, you can send your edits to your team, they don't have to know anything about Premiere Pro, but they can actually make notes in frame.io and then it will actually appear here in this panel and it will pop up as markers on your video at specific times. And so you will see all of the notes and play through it. You get all your notes and it's just a great collaboration tool. I was always wondering if Adobe was going to create their own version of frame.io, but I'm assuming they bought them out or something and now it's included with Premiere Pro, which is super awesome. So that's a, a great new feature, and you get to that tab with the review with frame.io workspace, which you can get right here if you don't want to go through this menu right there, which was a little clunky. All right, those are the major updates that I'm excited about. I hope you're excited about them too. If you're still here watching this video, I just want to say thank you for being here. I am trying to improve the quality of my YouTube videos and also just the timeliness, the, I don't know. I'm just trying to make my YouTube channel better. As you probably saw, if you've been following me, I did an update. So this is now my personal channel again. I did that a while ago, went back to video school, my company brand, and now it's back to Phil Ebener. And I just want to share a little bit more about uh, just make videos about stuff that I love, make videos that I care about. And it's tiring though. Can I be completely honest with you? It's tiring to, to try to make videos on top of everything. And I'm not even talking about work stuff. Today, I got up early with the kids, got three kids under four. Uh, Isabel, my wife, volunteered at the school, so I was stuck at home watching my daughter, which is awesome. We have great days. Usually I take her out to get pancakes every time my wife volunteers with my sons at their preschool, but today it's like a couple days after Easter and my wife's birthday, so we had enough sweets. So we just hung out at home, we did a little craft we were making hiking sticks from some branches that we found on a hike from yesterday and then it was like nap time lunch afternoon get ready for t-ball my kids are in t-ball and then by the time it's 
nine o'clock. I'm out here trying to record a tutorial for you guys, but I'm excited about it. I'm pumped about it and that's why I'm here. I wouldn't be doing it if I wasn't pumped. All that to say though, let me know what you want me to make videos on. I have people like you watching this video because I make Premiere Pro tutorials and video creation tutorials, but I have other people that come here for other content. So let me know in the comments what you think my direction should be, what kinds of stories you want me to create, anything, or just send me a message. Okay, gonna edit this video and then um, post it and then go to bed. Party's over, bye.